I think the most interesting thing about weight block design and, and just cores in general is uh, you can have two weight blocks with the same RG value, same total differential value, but two completely different shapes and they roll completely different as they go down the lane. The weight block or the core sitting here like so we can assume the pin is here, right? But wh where's the mass bias or the PSA? Where does that fall along this? Yeah, so it actually goes into this kind of cutaway cavity in here. So the unique thing about that is a lot of, if you look at a lot of the older asymmetrical pieces that we've done, a lot of times they have flats on those sides. So when you actually hit your thumb into that, it does change the dynamics quite a bit more than it will in here. This has asymmetry built into it a lot more. Yeah. So in general, your thumb is going to end up somewhere in that cavity, and it doesn't matter if you swing the PSA closer to your thumb or further away from your thumb, you can see this cavity extends all the way across that kind of y-axis line there. Typically on these high-end weight blocks, uh, Premier Line balls, we're gonna see some kind of a slug either on the bottom of the ball, away from the pin, or something by the pin that I know creates a little bit more flare potential, but this is, and I know it's not the first time we've done it, but why did we choose it this time and, and how, do we, how do we get away with that? In general, the slugs and the internal balls, they're, they're used as performance enhancers, right? Like you just said, we'll put a slug on there, it's a different density, it might be a little bit heavier. We can increase the total diff. A lot of the uh, dynamics is actually built into the shape and like you hinted to, it's been almost a decade since we've seen uh, a ball that, or a high-end asymmetrical ball with no slug or no internal ball on it. I know sometimes we make designs that have the top parts bigger and sometimes the other, and, but this looks fairly even. Is that safe to say or no? Right, yeah, there's actually, that's kind of the decision-making process, right? When you're, you're trying to establish what RG values you're looking for, what the total diff is, you know, symmetrical, asymmetrical. But ultimately, you are looking at that top to bottom. Does, do I want the weight evenly distributed top to bottom? We know that there's different effects on ball motion if the top weighs more than the bottom versus having it the other way around. Generally, when it's very even like this, you get a very true roll. And then as you don't have a slug, you don't have any different densities far away from the center, more even and more true roll overall. So I think you're gonna see a very consistent type of performance out of this Sentinel core. You can get the numbers, RG and you know, differential that stuff on the website and such, but uh, tell us a little bit more about this particular shape. Again, we, we don't have, there's no slug, this is just the entire body. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. So some of those features that we're highlighting, the biggest one on this Sentinel core is having more of the mass towards the top and wider around the X. So what that actually does is it makes bigger RG bands around the X axis, which makes this ball extremely driller friendly. So in the orientation that it's sitting right here, the pin is directly on the top. So that would be a six and three quarter inch pin, right? If mm. this is rotating like this, yeah. it's just dead end over end. Right. But what you'll notice as we turn this, yeah. you still have a lot of heavy mass that's close to where that ball would be rotating around. So mm. even as we get kind of in this orientation, again, dynamic integrity is preserved. You can use a lot of different drillings on this and the dynamics are already built into this shape with all those dynamic draft angles and everything. Ball motion, while the core is incredibly important, isn't the only thing, right? The combination of core and cover is really what's gonna translate to what you're gonna see on the lane. 
What we described, like I said, on those numbers, this is a very low RG part, which means it's gonna spin up very quickly, very early. It's got a lot of total differentials, so that's gonna flare quite a bit. That means that more left to right ball motion generally. And then very high intermediate, because we cut in those, those flats. It's not flat, it's even thinner on this Sentinel core. So very high intermediate means it wants to kind of write itself really quick when it does change direction. Mm. But when you combine that with what we've done on this is R2S deep, a very mild cover, you're gonna see still very clean through the front part of the lane, even though this is a lower RG part, but it's not gonna to wanna to miss the spot quite as much because of that combination of the core and the cover. And then everything else just kind of comes together as it predictably changes direction off the end of the pattern. Ah, oh, that's awesome, man. I can't wait to get out there and give it a shot.